Hey guys, in this video Nate is going to review our Victron system and how the solar array, the battery bank, integrate together through all of the parts and pieces that we, pro we procured through Victron. At the end of the video you'll hear Jeff explain our GX Touch 70 and he is a great guy, we highly recommend him. So if you guys are looking to create a lithium battery bank or go solar and you're in the Melbourne, Port Canaveral area, contact me, we'll make sure you get his information. Enjoy the video. Beginning outside, these are our five 435 watt panels run in series, each rated at 49 volts for a total of 250 volts. This reaches the max capacity of our 250 volt MPPT controller. Lots of questions are why we ran all five on the controller and didn't break it up. The short answer, we weren't concerned about partial shading. Another concern brought to our attention is that each panel has the capacity to exceed 49 volts in the perfect conditions, which could damage our MPPT controller. After much consideration, we decided those conditions were too hard to meet and will continue to monitor them during the testing process. So fingers crossed. From here, we move into the port motor control room. The very top, you'll see we have two MPPT controllers. The left one has all five panels we just discussed. The solar panels wires are first connected to the 800 volt solar disconnect. This allows us to terminate power to the solar controllers instantly. From there, it runs to the MPPT controller and then to the batteries. Between the MPPT and the batteries, we installed another safety disconnect to terminate power to the batteries. In the future, we plan on installing more panels on the Bimini top. And the second MPPT on the right is wired and ready for those panels. The last item to mention in this room are the three red dials at the bottom, which are battery disconnects for our 12 volt system and both ocean volt motors. Moving inside on the opposing wall into the port aft cabin where the diesel tank used to be is our battery room. Located in this is the main bus bar where all positive and negative terminals are connected. Next to these bus bars are the four fuses for each battery bank. Each fuse is 200 amp capacity connected with 2 watt cables and we've already enjoyed the experience of blowing these fuses. Moving on to the brains of our battery bank. Each bank has one 16S BMS controller. Each of the leads are connected to two cells which are ran in parallel to create one cell each battery containing 16 cells. With the app associated with these BMSs, we are able to monitor the health and condition of the 16 cells in each battery bank. These proved to be a better BMS solution than the non-Bluetooth dallies provided to us by the battery supplier. We've included a link to these BMS in the video description below. Each bank has a Victron BMV, which includes a shunt. These shunts are connected to the positive and negative terminals of the battery and run to a Victron screen that provide the necessary data for each bank as reviewed at the end of the video. This concludes the review of our 48 volt battery system. Moving on to our 12 volt house battery system. We purchased two 12 volt 100 amp hour Renergy batteries. These batteries are ran in parallel, but with a disconnect installed between each battery, just in case one fails, we can run the house off the other battery. This battery bank also has a Victron BMV as will again be reviewed later in the video. These batteries are charged with another Victron MPPT 100 volt solar charger. However, this solar charger is not connected to any solar panels. It is merely connected to the main battery bank bus bar, allowing the 48 volt bank to constantly charge our 12 volt house batteries. All of this power generated is connected to this Victron Quattro inverter charger. This Quattro handles all of our AC needs as well as shore power needs. All Victron systems are then wired to the brains of the operation, the all-powerful Serbo GX with itty bitty living space. And that connects to the GX Touch 70 that Jeff from Expert Solar is about to review with us. So this is the one for the 12 volt system, the battery monitor. So that's going to give you your state of charge on the 12 volt batteries. Because you have the MPPT charging, it should almost always be 100%. Okay. On this one, Shore power coming in. This is all the AC loads that are on the inverter. So that's not gonna count things like um, your engines or your um, lights. DC to DC charger or your 12 volt lights, 12 volt water pump. All your 12 volt stuff's not gonna be on that. Okay. Your 12 volt loads will be here. 
Okay. Um, when, how do I see that? Is there a So you got 100%. Up? Go down once. It's going to give you a time to go. Right now it's saying infinite because we're, we've got plenty of power. Okay. Voltage on the battery. One more. That's the auxiliary battery. So you have two batteries. This is amperage going in and out. Again, positive and negative. I think you kind of already got that. Okay. And then it'll give that same information in a wattage. So it'll take the voltage and multiply it by the amperage to give you a wattage. Okay. Amp hours. So this is going to be how much you've pulled out of the battery since the last time it was charged. And back to okay. state of charge. On this one, only one of the batteries is actually connected to the screen. Okay. This is to give you a general indication of how all of them are on a percentage basis, voltage, um, and amperage. So if you're pulling an amperage from this, so 6.3 amps, just multiply that times four, or about. And it's actually going in, it's charging 6.3 amps. So we're, we're charging all four batteries at 25 amps, which is what the quadrant charge is. This is your solar, which is not on right now. Um, and those are all those individual devices. Okay. You want to go through the settings and stuff with Wi Fi or I think. Oh, do we do Wi Fi? Uh, well, it's already connected. It's it set up for your hotspot yeah. or whatever. So that way, if, if Jeff needs to look at it wherever he's at, I can connect it to my hotspot and he can see the screen and everything. Oh, or, okay. Or if you're at a marina somewhere where they have Wi-Fi, you can connect the system to the Wi-Fi and you guys can go on an adventure or something and say, hey, where's my boat at? And you can oh. look at it remotely. Okay. Yeah, let's go through that. That way I know what that is. So go settings. And we'll scroll down to Wi-Fi. Okay. Wi-Fi networks. And if there was any networks present, they would show up here and you could select one. Um, okay. So just say that one. We'll select that one. And then the password is the third one down. And you'll enter the password and hit the check mark. Whenever you want to change a setting or do anything in the servo, always hit the check mark to save it. Okay. And then how do we connect to it on our phone? Is it that app that you have to put on my phone? The VRM, yeah. yeah. The VRM, okay. Um, another good thing to know is the input current limit. So on the Quattro, depending on where you're plugged in, if you're plugged into a 50 amp short power, 30 amp short power, you're just running off your little Honda 2000 generator, whatever you're doing, you want to set the input current limit to an appropriate level. So if you're plugged into 50 amps, set it to 50 or 40. If you're plugged into 30 amps, set it to 30 or 20. If you run on a generator, set it to the you know a, a comfortable limit. The generator has a maximum continuous rated current of 10 amps. Set it to 8 or 9. This will also give you information about what the power is looking like from the dock. So AC in on line one, got 114 volts. That's a little low, but we are putting a 2,000 watt load on it. Um, and you can see what it is without the load on it. Usually you don't want to see that go below 108, 110. It'll start damaging things like refrigerators and air conditioners. And... Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, as always, leave us a comment. We look forward to hearing from you. Have a great day.